made in Hollywood. Now streaming on demand. An estranged son gets an unconventional opportunity to reconnect with his mother as Jake Johnson stars in the heartfelt comedy, Ride the Eagle. Hi, Leaf. Look at me talking to you even though I'm dead. That's trippy, right? I hereby leave my cabin to my son, provided he completes this list of tasks left for him at the cabin. Do you want a gun? No, should I? No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> The kernel of the idea of this one came, I had, uh, obviously we were in the throes of the pandemic. This was really early on and we were just missing people, but we didn't want to do a movie about a pandemic and we didn't want to do a movie that was on the nose of what was happening. We really just sat down and went, okay, what can we do that will be like a film that we'll be proud of that we think is good, but that we can actually achieve during this time. Because initially it started with me doing camera and then us both doing sound and we were trying to figure out like some cool little weird art house film. And then once we had that idea, we very much were like, all right, how much do we want to spend and what can we do? I didn't really know. My mom. This list could be anything. I know. I wasn't the mother you wish I'd been. I did not teach you enough stuff. So I made this list of lessons I learned to be most important on this planet. So the original idea of the movie was going to be me and this dog up at the cabin doing my mother's list, and the list was going to be in a journal. And then just sitting writing, I realized if I was watching this movie, I would get bored. And then I went, I would like to see the mom. Number one, be the predator, not the prey. Who are you, man? Your mom and I were lovers. And then to learn more about her, we realized we need a character who tells him how great his mother was. I'm gonna miss you, sweet girl. Your mind, your sense of humor. I'd worked with JK before. I didn't go through agents or managers. I just sent him an email and he replied that day. And, you know, we got lucky in that sense. And same with like, you know, we didn't know Susan. She was kind of the archetype for us. And we were like, let's just take a big swing. And then Susan will say no, we can like start to get realistic. You know, we sent her the script. Shani Rosenweig, her agent, uh, read the thing and said like, I think Susan would be good for this. And we kind of laughed it off and we were like, sure, you know. Of course you would. Marlon Brando would be good for Leaf, too. It'd be cool. <laughs> Sometimes life is messy. It doesn't go as you plan. But it's not over. Ah, I'm too stoned for this. And Susan called, and we had a conversation. Susan Trench and I, we had a bunch of meetings on the phone where she asked really big questions about Honey. And a lot of it was she wanted to make sure that Honey had a, was a three-dimensional character and wasn't just a tool in order to make the story work. You know, the movie obviously doesn't work without her. She's the heart of the movie. She's the mom. Now, it's a weird thing because she's talking to a camera and she's in the TV in the movie, so you feel like slightly distanced from her. But the entire longing of that relationship, and if the movie works for people, it works because they're sad she's dead. And the only reason that they're sad she's dead is because they believe she's real. I'll tell you a lot of stories about her. She had quite an appetite. She was a very, very sexual animal, and that's probably not what her son wants to hear, I guess. Made in Hollywood. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. We want to know, what would you have asked? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, for more videos like this, hit the MIH TV logo right here. And for the next awesome video, click right there.